Hello everyone, my name is Mathieu Mézil, I am consultant, trainer and speaker for Infinite Square in Paris, France and Data Platform Development MPP. In this video, I will briefly speak about the architecture of WCF Async Queryable Services. I know WCF Async Queryable Services is a long name, but I chose it because I find it very explicit. WCF Services because I use a standard WCF service. Queryable because the goal of WCF Async Queryable services is to be able to query your data from the client here. But when I think about querying, I'm not only thinking about the basic where, a basic order by, and pagination. I'm also thinking about group by, join, subqueries, aggregations, etc. In fact, I'm thinking about all you can do with Entity Framework. And async, because in a client here, using asynchronous is important to have a good responsiveness on your application. And in my case, I use async await pattern. My architecture is this one. You can see that I use abstraction in each layer. This abstraction allows to be independent about a framework. In my case, I use Entity Framework, but you could use another ORM if you want. The abstraction also allows reusing your code with another kind of application, like ISP.NET for example. And of course, it allows mocking and unit testing each layer. All my code is generated except views and view models. So I don't have to choose between productivity versus architecture. The code generation is posted using T4 templates. My T4 template generates many parcel methods that allows to customize the code to add business logic, for example. Now, if you want to modify the code every time you use WCF async queryable services, you also can, my T4 templates, just call a method defined in centralized T4 include files. So you can directly modify them. I think that in this case of scenarios, this approach is better than the framework because it's very flexible. Indeed, if you need a new feature, you don't have to wait from an hypothetic future version. You can do it yourself in the metacode. You just have to keep in mind that in this case, you could have to reapply some changes when you will get a new version. But anyway, it's probably a better option than waiting for your future in a future version with no certitude to have it one day. Using T4 templates also is a good thing for model updates. Indeed, if you change your model, you can regenerate all your solution T4 with only one click in Visual Studio. Now we'll look at the query process. So imagine that I write this query in a view model on my client here. The query is executed on the execute method call. To have a synchronous query, we can't use iQueryable. So I define my own interface, iAsyncQueryable. And I also define all extension methods defined in queryable class for I async queryable. As with entity framework, the query is based on a context. This context serializes the query, sends it to the server, waits from the result and returns it to the view model. Expression tree are not serializable, so I define my own serializable expressions that describe link expression trees. The serializable expression is sent to the server which transforms it into a link query using a visitor. I can very easily change the query in the server in order to include white's logic, for example. I have a special visitor for link to entities that improves it. For example, I can use that time subtraction in my query which is not supported by link to entities yet. Then the query is executed on the data access layer and the result is sent to the view model. Now the question is how to deal with types not known by the server. 
If the link query uses a type that is not known by the server, the sizable expression includes the type description. In this case, the sizable expression includes the fact that spent by year type has two properties, year of type int and amount of type new level of decimal. Then the repository emits IL to generate the type on the server and be able to use it in the link query. After executing it, the repository sends the result to the client context using a sort of dictionary where the key is a property name and the value is a property value. Then the client context uses it to fill a new instance of the expected type. It's all for this session. I hope you like it. Some other videos will be available soon. If you have some feedbacks, you can contact me by email or on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks.